Welcome to another episode of the Jam Pack Report today for April the 30th of 2021. That's right, we're at the end of April already. Tomorrow is May 1st and we all keep getting older, continuing this march towards death of life. Uh, but this is a daily gaming news podcast meant to bring you the hottest news you need to know from around the industry, hosted on YouTube and podcast services around the world five days a week. It's your one-stop shop for everything you need to know. So if you enjoyed the show and you like what you see, hit that subscribe button and keep coming back for more. But we've got a lot of news to dive into on today's show. Show. We're talking about Xbox's focus on PC as a gaming platform in the months and years ahead. On top of that, Sony has finally begun selling the PlayStation 5 in China, and yesterday's State of Play brought some pretty awesome looks at Ratchet & Clank Rift Apart if you did want to go back and check that out. And we'll be talking about all of these stories and more, so without further ado, let's go ahead and dive into it. First and foremost, continuing our PC gaming journey in 2021 and beyond, this comes from Matt Booty, head of Xbox Game Studios, who takes to the Xbox Wire to make some pretty big statements. This is a very lengthy blog post and we won't be diving into all of it, uh, but I think you can summarize the entirety of this by looking at this sentence right here, building communities around games, not devices. Microsoft is focused on Xbox as a platform, but it's a platform that spans platforms. It's a platform that is existent on mobile. It exists on PC and it exists on the hardware that we all know and love from Microsoft itself. And so that's kind of the sentiment that they're really driving home through a lot of this. Now, one thing that I want to point out here is this story. We know many of you play across more than just your PC, including on Xbox and mobile. That's why we're excited to announce Halo Infinite will support multiplayer crossplay and cross progression when it releases later this year. That means if you're playing on PC, you can play with your friends on Xbox One and Xbox Series X and S. And it also means that your multiplayer customization and progress will follow you across all platforms. We have been working closely with PC community to ensure that Halo Infinite offers a premier PC experience, including highly desired features such as support for ultra-wide and super ultra-wide screens, triple keybinds, a wide variety of advanced graphic options, and more. We want to make sure that Halo is serving the PC community. On top of that, I also want to point out this story right here. Halo The Master Chief Collection, at the end of 2019, launched on PC as part of Xbox Game Pass, and of course, it also came to Steam. And on top of that, since then, over 10 million players have played Halo The Master Chief Collection, with the vast majority of them being brand new to the franchise. That is an impressive metric. And they go on to talk more about how impactful Xbox Game Pass has been on PC and their industry partners as well. This is a significant change. Game developers are at the heart of bringing great games to our players, and we want them to find success on our platforms. That's why today we're announcing that we are updating our Microsoft Store terms for PC game developers. As part of our commitment to empower every PC game creator to achieve more, starting on August 1st, the developer share of Microsoft Store PC game sales net revenue will increase to 88% from 70%. A clear, no-strings-attached revenue share means developers can bring more games to more players and find greater commercial success from doing so, and you can read more about that from Sarah Bond, head of Game Creator Experience and Ecosystem. That's a significant change that essentially puts them at the same level as Epic Games when it comes to revenue sharing with developers. That's something that will entice players to come to the Microsoft Store and will entice developers to put their games on the Microsoft Store. They talk more about the technology they are introducing. We are proud to empower all developers with the platform and services they need to execute their vision and provide exceptional experiences on PC. We introduced DirectX 12 Ultimate to both Xbox Series X and S and PC, coupled with the newly announced DirectX 12 Agility SDK, which enables incredible graphics experiences like ray tracing for an even larger set of PC gamers. And they talk more about Auto HDR, which is coming to Xbox and PC gamers, of course, currently out right now, and it's being tested with over over 1,000 DirectX-based games. Very impressive stuff here. The future of PC gaming is brighter than ever, writes Matt Booty, and I could not agree more. Xbox is doing a lot to empower this platform even further uh, than they already have been empowering it over the course of the past few months and years. 
looking forward to playing some Halo Infinite on PC personally, and that cross-progression is a big deal. But that's not where the story stops today. Of course, Inside Infinite is something that launches on the last Thursday of every month. Very big update this month for PC players, because you're essentially getting a deep dive into the features you can expect, and they pretty much just flesh out what was mentioned here in the Continuing Our PC Gaming Journey in 2021 and Beyond post. Uh, but in short, you've got that super ultra-wide support, that ultra-wide support, very, very high frame rates, everything you could ever want is going to be baked into Inside Infinite this month, and it's going to be baked into Halo Infinite when that launches later this year. If you're a PC player, I highly recommend you dive in, give this a read if you're planning on picking up Halo Infinite this fall, uh, but right now, this game, the screenshots that we're seeing here, this proves the value in a delay. Because if this game had come out last year, this would not be happening. You would see a similar situation to what Cyberpunk is doing right now, or I should say what CD Projekt Red is doing with Cyberpunk right now, where the game launched, it was okay, but it was largely broken, and now they're playing catch-up and trying to rebuild the game throughout the months and year of 2021. Halo does not have to do that. This is going to be one of the most impressive games of the year. It looks stunning, and I can't wait to dive in when it launches this fall slash winter slash holiday season, since there is no definitive release date yet, uh, but certainly a lot to look forward to here. I mean, if you look at these screenshots, just stunning stuff that you're seeing from the team at 343. I hope it's as good as I think that it will be. But all of this to say, PC is a very large focus for Xbox going forward, and that's a wise move, especially when you look at Xbox Cloud Gaming, because not only are you supporting and empowering players with very high-end PCs, those that bought a 3080 or a 3090 on day one, if even possible, you are getting that support. But on top of that, if you were just a player with a Chromebook, you can boot up Xbox Cloud Gaming at xbox.com slash play when the program rolls out in full, Plug in an Xbox controller and you're off to the races. You can literally play Xbox from any device. iPhones, Android tablets and phones, any kind of Windows 10 PCs, Mac OS, any device is an Xbox device. And that is incredibly powerful when you're talking about market saturation and being ready to play when the players are ready to play. That is something that I think is going to give Microsoft a very significant advantage across multiple platforms. But availability is not everything. These games have to be good, and it looks like we are getting another big, potentially good game from the team behind Hitman. You're looking at IO Interactive, and this comes from Tom Phillips, the news editor over at Eurogamer, who reports on Windows Central's recent podcast that shares one of the projects that IO Interactive is working on is allegedly a dragon-focused brand new IP in partnership with Microsoft to be an Xbox exclusive. That's something that I think a lot of people could be looking forward to. Now, this is a project that is still many years away. It's very early in development, but this is something that was allegedly kind of teased earlier this year, because right now, now you have the James Bond game, you have the future of Hitman, those two are being developed, and then you have this third mystery IP that was teased earlier this year from I.O. That is allegedly this project with Microsoft, which apparently received the green light earlier this year. So that's something to look forward to as well. Uh, but this again goes back to IO Interactive staffing up and Xbox expanding what they bring to Xbox players. Because as we discussed on yesterday's show with the talks about $184 million uh, that Sony is investing in bringing unique experiences to PlayStation 5, Games sell consoles. The technology can be incredibly impressive. The subscription service can be by and far the best in the industry. But if the games aren't good, then the console will not sell as well as it could, the platform will not be as powerful as it could be, and players will not be as satisfied as they potentially could be. And it's very important for these games to exist, and these games to be delivering incredible experiences that no one can get anywhere else. And so if you're partnering up with a very significant development studio like IO Interactive, you are potentially already setting yourself up for success, but I love this quote down here. Quote, without going into too much detail, we have a third universe that we're actively working on, which is a bit different and absolutely a love child, Hakana Brock said, of course, which is the IO boss. 
It's something our core people, our veteran staff, have been dreaming about for some time. This is something that is in motion, and it's very likely that IO will be publishing not only our own games, but other people's games in the future as well. It was just a handful of years ago where this was unthinkable, where it was more than just a few big publishers, things are changing. That still works. I think big publishers have a role to play going forward. I'll be open and say it's very likely IO will have one of our games published by someone else. That's very possible, end quote. And so between those two individual quotes, you have what looks to be the announcement of a new IP and a potential publishing partner for that IP. And again, we have the Eurogamer report that claims if you're connecting the dots, that could be Microsoft. So we'll see more in the months ahead. Of course, with the summer season coming, we have a lot of big gaming centric events on the way. We could be seeing something around that time period, but I wouldn't hold your breath. Again, something that's still very, very distant in the future. But that's enough Xbox talk for today. Let's shift over to the PlayStation side of things. Sony has begun selling the PlayStation 5 in China. This was a story that broke earlier this week, but it's something that is absolutely significant for the long-term success of the console. The disc version will set buyers back 3,899 CNY or $603, while the digital only will cost $479 in the country. Both options prices are a bit higher than in the US, but fans in the country have had no choice but to buy the consoles from the gray market at inflated prices before this anyway, so now they are officially going to be available. China is a very big market and it's important that every company get in there and tap into it when possible if you want to have the most success you can possibly have. There are a lot of players that don't have access to a lot of games because of restrictions in China, and so to be able to officially bring the PlayStation 5 to the region is something that is very significant. On top of that, a paired back version of the PlayStation Plus collection is also going to be included, so you do have an additional benefit there that is certainly going to push this console to new heights in the region as well. So, look forward to seeing more of this. There are three games launching with the console in China, according to M. Moon, or Mariella Moon here at Engadget, which are Sackboy, Ratchet and Clank, and Genshin Impact. That last one, that's going to be a big one. Uh, so we'll see more about these sales figures in the months ahead as we report on the sales figures every single month here. But a very big win for Sony in China. Another big win yesterday was seeing more about Ratchet & Clank Rift Apart because we got 15 minutes of gameplay footage in yesterday's state of play. It was incredible. This game is the first of many to come that really show the power of what the PlayStation 5 has to offer. And we saw another in Returnal, which is releasing today. And it's got incredible reviews so far. A lot of people say it's very, very difficult. A lot of people say it does need more polish. But from the gameplay I've seen, I'm pretty impressed with what I have seen from Returnal. But Ratchet & Clank Rift Apart showcases everything the PlayStation 5 truly has to offer. You have ray tracing at its highest level, you have incredibly in-depth worlds, you have fast SSD storage that is fundamentally changing the way that developers have designed this game. This is the first game that truly showcases every single part of the PlayStation 5 in a way that really only Astrobot could back whenever the PlayStation 5 first came out. A lot of big benefits in this game. But you can check out the entire state of play. It's out right now on YouTube, or you can watch the VOD on Twitch. But on top of that, Among Us has been confirmed for PlayStation 4 and PlayStation 5, and it is going to be getting some Ratchet & Clank skins when it launches later this year. Among Us originally launched for PC and mobiles back in 2018, writes Eurogamer's Tom Phillips, before blowing up in popularity during 2020. And of course, it launched for Nintendo Switch last December, and it's also slated for release on Xbox One and Series X and S at some point later this year too. I'd say those are probably going to be uh, parody releases where you have it releasing on all platforms at some time later this summer. So we'll see more about that. I really hope this game comes to Game Pass because that would make the most sense and it's already available on Xbox Game Pass for PC, so it seems like a natural fit in the Xbox ecosystem, but this will continue to make this game grow, and it's very important to get this game growing ASAP, because the attention span of players is fleeting. There are plenty of new games coming out that will distract you from Among Us, and it's important to get it out as soon as possible, sooner rather than later. Hopefully we're looking at maybe June, July, August is pushing it, but if there are enough new enhancements, I suppose that could be acceptable. 
But, of course, back to Ratchet & Clank, very impressive game that comes out in just a matter of weeks. And if you want to dive back into the entire state of play, you can get a deep dive into the gameplay, the characters, and the arsenal when it launches later this summer. But to round out today's show, Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order is coming to PS5 and the Xbox Series X and S later this summer, and existing players can get that free upgrade. While few details were shared, you can expect this to be the full lineup of new enhancements that come to next generation devices. Full 60 frames per second support across the board, enhancements including better textures, ray tracing, all of that good stuff. Of course, I'll let you know when more details are available. But Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order is a fan fantastic game, one of the best Star Wars games in my opinion, and while it got a couple of benefits on the new generation of consoles last year, it's nice to see a full improvement, a full upgrade coming later this summer, so stay tuned and I'll let you know when that game actually drops. But that rounds out today's episode of the Jam Pack Report. If you enjoyed today's show, drop me a like down below and let me know what stories caught your eye. But specifically, what do you think about Xbox's focus on PC gaming? Do you think that's a wise move? And will you play Halo Infinite on PC? Would love to hear what you have to say. On top of that, what do you think IO Interactive is up to? And do you think they're working for Microsoft? And how do you think Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart looks? Would love to hear what you have to say. But until Monday, you guys have a fantastic weekend. I'll talk to you soon. And peace.